that's good YouTube and welcome to the house if I look a little bit crazy it's 433 and I'm waiting on my towels to get through the washer and dryer so I can finally take a shower I've joined the the stinky Yu-Gi-Oh player crew for a day but the plumbing is all fixed in my house and I said I wouldn't do a video unless there was pretty huge news and this would be among that we have the TCG confirmation from the GAMA the Gamma trade show and it looks to be pretty much darn close to the OCG list. I'm not seeing anything notable missing at all. Uh, we've, we've got all of our major reprint hits in here that we would want. So let's go ahead and get over some TCG names that this time aren't so bad. Uh, not, not like that for higher stuff. I actually really like these names. And then we'll go ahead and look at some of the secondary market prices right now uh, for this structure deck and determine deck review. Should you be getting this? Well, uh, short answer there is I think you should be getting three if you want to try out this fun strategy and get some awesome value. Let's go into it. Lilith, Lady of Lament, Darkest Diablos, Lord of the Lair, Arima, the Wicked Warden, and Duke Shade, the Sinister Shadow Lord, are four of the new cards coming out of the structure deck that give an awesome strategy, kaiju-proof strategy some of the times, that is really awesome. I, I think that this deck melts together a new kind of strategy. Consistency might be an issue, though, and I think it's going to be on the players to kind of figure out how to break it into the metagame. It has a real feel like when Dark Lords came out and we got Graph up. It has a really similar feel that a lot of people are going to play it but only a few might top but whatever a structure deck is this hyped though it, it's exciting and they're gonna do a special event i recall they the konami tcg actually announced they're gonna have some kind of structure deck event for this which is really cool that they're going to push so much for this structure deck and it's the most hype structure i want to say in a long long time we had the dinosaur structure we had abcs but people are really excited about this strategy and what's in it with these new cards if you haven't uh read them before i seriously suggest you look them up and consider them but going on we got diablo's king of the abyss lich lord king of the underworld prometheus king of the shadows archfiend emperor the first lord of horror what what name is that uh i'm i'm blanking there caius the mega monarch is a huge reprint here that's a good one it's a 15 dollar value right now uh we'll take a look at it in a bit but it almost feels like they're throwing back to the original dark structure deck right where caius was kind of the the figure of that so it's kind of giving the buff caius that was expensive on the secondary market uh, a throwback in here i would have actually liked to see regular caius in here with him but he doesn't need it right but it's still so cool that they're kind of looking to the past of their releases and including a, a nod to it legendary maju garzette Vanity, Vanity's Fiend is pretty nice in here. Uh, another welcome addition. It was going up the Battles of Legend version slowly over time. And this makes sure everybody has a copy to access for a long time to come. It's always just going to be viable, right? There's going to be special summon formats. You're going to be able to summon Vanity's Fiend. And that's going to do it for you sometimes. Unless True Draco is running around. Mist Archfiend is a really cool card. Infernal Dragon. Archfiend Cavalry, Stygian Street Patrol, it's always nice to have extras of those for fun, funzy decks. Phantom of Chaos, Plague Wolf, Fiendish Rhino, Warrior, Curry Bandit, Tour Guide from the Underworld's nice, Absolute King, Backjack, and Riddling Karibo. There was a buyout for Riddling Karibo, and I was like, you guys, you're buying the wrong Link Karibo, and then on top of it, it ends up getting a reprint, so uh, you guys who bought that one out, good job on you, wrong Link Karibo. We've got Layer of Darkness in the Spells, Recurring Nightmare, very welcome there. The price was actually starting to creep up for the OTS pack, and it's creeped back down. We actually showed, I think, its lowest prices uh, when we were showing off the OCG structure, and uh, those went down a little. Allure of Darkness is still actually very expensive. It's around $5. People were thinking, this might be the card Konami doesn't give us. You know, we didn't get Solemn Strike in that one structure deck. Allure Darkness, that might be it. Gosh, old dang Konami. Nope, Konami's doing a great job. And easy access allures for everybody. This is likely to be one of the money cards that, like, over time goes back up in value. Because every printing of Allure, Destiny Soldiers, like, uh, this, all the Structure Deck ones, they they seem to just go up over time. So you're going to want to hang on to yours and not, like, trade them off immediately unless you're getting a decent deal. Hand Destruction, 
Foolish Burial Goods is a great one. That was, was kind of getting pricey as well, slowly. It was above the $5 mark. And is the low-tier hero's calling. It does so good with the bamboo engine and so many different things. We got Boogie Trap. <laughs> I, I still don't know why. Fires of Doomsday, Veil of Darkness, and then the trap cards... Grinning Gray Virus, Crush Card Virus, Deck Devastation Virus, Eradicator Epidemic Virus, and Full Force Virus. This this deck you might call it sick. Yeah, you might just call it a little a little sick. No, know what I'm saying? <laughs> but seriously, they're all all very welcome to be easy to get, especially Deck Devastation Virus and Eradicator. I'm a fan of this move. Full Force Virus, yeah, just reprinted to the Megatons, but sure, why why not? Uh, Dark Light is a very welcome one. That was an old one with one printing. It received a lot of hype when the structure was announced. Looks like Konami kind of took notice of that. Or maybe the, their R&D already thought about putting it with the strategy and it's in here. Trap of Darkness. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I read this card because of that. That's kind of a situational one. We've got Mind Crush, Rise to Full Height. Curse of Darkness and Sinister, your Shiro. So a really, really good overall value. But how how good is it? In the words of Simo, how 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 good is it? Well, I pulled this as much up for you as I could so that you guys could read along with me and maybe skip ahead to this point if you already knew what was in the structure. But Vanity's Fiend is first. Uh, I, I have this actually price uh, low to high here. He, he doesn't really have co many copies under $3. People are selling the Astral Pack commons around there, though, which is nice. The Championship Pack Rare at $3.55 is actually a pretty good deal for Championship Pack cards. Uh, we've got the Battles of Legend Ultra around 3 So that's, that's one good card that's solid value that you'll probably want to keep over time. The common will probably start out around $0.50 cents to a dollar, and then start chugging up over time from there as quantities sell out and we don't get a reprint for a while. It's, it's kind of interesting to see them promote the strategy. And this card should definitely be super interesting for uh, play in the mirror match. I want to see how people like get around it because there's... There are ways to get around it, and it's going to be pretty fun to watch. Uh, at least in the sealed play here. And I, it seems I have two tabs with Vanity's Fiend. Caius the Mega Monarch, a low of 1580 When we last visited this, this was actually around $18. It seems like people keep trying to lower it a little. Please buy my Caius's for way above market price, please. We bought them out thinking they wouldn't be in the dark structure deck. Well, Konami had other plans, and it does look like you're going to get a very budget uh, option. Just chill out on the hollows. Like, look, this is a Mega Pack Ultra and uh like it's very close to the original printing if you want a hollow printing just wait off this is definitely going to be a huge coolant on the price uh, the reason it's just up so high is because it saw some relevant tech play once upon a time and uh from here on out the 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 ultras will definitely fall there's no doubt about it just just chill off and or chill out and, and stay off of this card until you are comfortable with the price you are paying uh I, I think it'll be eight dollars before too soon uh, which was its original price before it got bought out tour guide from the underworld low of about a dollar fifty for many versions we actually see the collector's tent there's multiple dollar listings now that wasn't there last time the ocg one was announced so good for them uh if you want your hollow version from the collector's tent relatively cheap other versions are still mostly holding above that though and uh, that is, you know, independent sellers can sell at any time. Ultimate Rare is still up because of the BA hype. So if you're searching Max Rarity, this is not going to put a coolant at all on the Ultimate Rare. Or the Secret, most likely. You're, you're going to see the other versions fall a little bit. But the, the higher Rarity, not much at all. But if you do want the Super, now, uh, now is actually probably a good time to snipe. Uh, people that are deciding to sell are going to sell there. And it's probably not going to go down much from a dollar for a super tour guide recurring nightmare like i said i'm super glad to see this card not get bought out spiked where people kind of get it around the hype of a dark deck once again of course the secret rares are way up there and are going to stay way up there because people are crazy about their high rarity cards but it's really nice to see uh we already had one common version readily available but they thought forward and made it so you could have another so that it didn't happen with these because it's you know not infinite ots6 packs are getting busted open and uh but 
that was the first reprint since gold so it's it's really good there forward thinking like i said hand destruction is actually surprisingly pricey uh i didn't know this one so this is a nice reprint of course exodia duels use it and we see that there's a way under market price listings now for this too since the ocg announcement so that's pretty good and we had another common i actually didn't know about i did not know this was rise of the true dragons you learn something new every day guys Foolish Burial Goods, uh, up here at the $5 mark, uh, about five sixty, it was holding, and now that we have the TCG News, we might see it dip back down to $3 like it originally was before it got spiral hyped, um, but uh, it's really hard to tell with the hollow version, it could be 4 it could even just stay at 5 but I'm, I'm gonna call around the three fifty to 4 mark is, uh, gonna be an immediate impact once we actually get the structure deck in our hands. And Dark Light! Oh, the wrong hype! Still at $3 for the hollow. That's not bad if you're trying to hollow out your deck and you want a copy of this. It was hyped all the way to $6. Remember market price, $1.84. It wasn't even there when it got bought out. So, really interesting to see their forward thinking through the structure deck. I, I really like the value crammed in here overall from before the reprints it's it's a really solid package and <laughs> the, the jokes i get it in the comment section already but it, it is really solid and konami did a great job with it so i'm i'm a big fan that they transitioned it over here to uh really mirror the ocg version and it's it's a good look I, I i'm a fan of getting the same kind of thing they're getting and getting the opportunities they get when it comes to structured x and good job on this one konami i i really like the, the what you've created here